Okay, so it is my great pleasure to introduce our final keynote speaker for, for RSS, uh, Professor Jun Ho Oh from, um, well, is a distinguished professor of mechanical engineering and the director of the Hubo Lab at the Korea Advanced Institute of Science and Technology, KAIST. He got his undergraduate and master's degree from Yonsei University in, in Seoul, Korea, and his PhD from Berkeley in, 18, in 1985. Uh, he uh, does a lot of work with humanoid robots, builds these amazing systems, and was the winner of the DRC, the Dark Robotics Challenge, at uh, 2015. So, looking forward to, to the talk. Okay. I don't see screen. Okay. Oh, is my... Oh, mouse is here. <laughs> I've lost my orientation. Okay, there. I've clicked down. Oops. Still, I cannot see my. Hmm. Uh, can I handle this one? Uh, any, anybody handle this one, please? It worked just before, but. <laughs> I have my poor eyesight. Yep. Yeah, oh, this is in Korean. Okay. No, no, no it doesn't matter. We, <laughs> we have to move. I have to find the cursor first. So, what are the settings? Um, no, just settings is done. It just, yeah, 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 yeah. And F5, okay. Yeah, oh, it's working. Okay, I'm very happy. Um, um, it's my honor to be here as a speaker, and thanks for inviting me uh, for this uh, extraordinary conference. Um, when I see the name of this conference, Science and Systems Robot, Okay, still I thought that still is in science area. I believe that robot is in engineering stage. So we are actually making the robot. Um, anyhow, uh, so today I would like to uh, uh, share my experiences working on uh, the robots in recently. Uh, firstly, I would like to show you one thing. Oh, it is, oh, it is, oh. Sorry. Okay, this one is wrong slice. Um, I'd like to show you this one first. The Menschen sind manchmal ein bisschen seltsam, was das Protokoll anbelangt. Of course. I'm so honored to have an opportunity to meet you, Chancellor. Your emotional intelligence and sense of diplomacy will help me learn the nuanced aspects of human intelligence. By the way, I hope you're not too downhearted about tonight's soccer results. After all, Germany is one of the most successful national teams in international competitions, having won a total of four <laughs> World Cups, three European Championships, and one Confederations Cup. So really, it is still one of the best teams in the world. Yeah, Sophia, that's stimmt, wenn man auf der langen Zeitachse guckt. In Germany, I don't Aber, understand. Sagt, heute Abend sind wir alle sehr traurig. Do you know who she is in red jacket? It's Angela, Angela Merkel. Um, she met uh, Sofia yesterday, right after um, the German team defeated by South Korean team. <laughs> Zero to two, yesterday, about this time. And <laughs> I'm sorry for German people. Anyhow, and the, by chance, she had kind of interview with uh, Angela Merkel. Um, actually, th that is Sofia, uh, is very, very famous these days, um, so-called intelligent um, android, humanoid. Um, and actually, I have some relations with uh, these teams. Um, and this, uh, she was appeared last year in United Nations somewhere. And she delivered many interesting conversation with human, and she discussed about the future of man and human beings, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Actually, I met uh, the inventor of this robot is David Hansen about 12 years ago, and and we built a so-called um, Ibot Hubo, and it means that he designed the Ibot Einstein's head for my Hubo robots, and we 
changed, shifted uh, the, uh, the outfit of Hubert to be like a space man. So um, by the time the head looks like something like that, it's 2017 version and bottom is uh, Albert Hubert's 2005 version. And by the time this robot was uh, designed to express many various kind of facial expression uh, with a kind of space uh, man-like costume, and as you see that he can display five or six different kinds of human uh, emotion through uh, his facial expression. Um, he, by the time he was quite popular because uh, he met many famous uh, celebs in the world, you should know him. And yeah. <laughs> traditional Korean bow. And you should know him also. And there are another very famous guy, Putin. I, I lower the volume a little bit. Okay. And, and he is still acting, right? And two uh, front men was retired. But and also the another episode very recently. Um, I'm working at Kaist and about a month ago, uh, we got uh, this kind of news in the newspaper, say that KAIST is developing killing robot, and all the AI scientists or robot scientists should not work with KAIST uh, because they are developing killer robot. Uh, actually, it was happening, um, uh, 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 actually happening. And by the time, the same newspaper showed this picture with the explanation of how Empress Walsh uh, initiated uh, these kind of issues by the time. The robot, big robot with this big, uh, like police curb, um, uh, that is my robot, Hubo FX2, and the, the man is my student. And he, it is not a killer robot, actually. Uh, it is a uh, human riding. Um, robot and this uh, the big like his uh, cup like uh, thing on, uh, on the robot is actually Olympic torch. So it was uh, this robot was used for delivering Olympic torch by the time. But anyhow, the newspaper showed this one as a killing robot. So it is kind of nonsense. Anyhow, it was kind of a kind of misunderstanding of our the uh, research proposal. It is Korean words that translated uh, to the English. That's so a misinterpretation, make this kind of misunderstanding. So Professor Walsh visited KAIST, our Korea, and explained about that. And we solved all the, this kind of misunderstanding after that. Uh, but the reason that people is very much afraid of this kind of thing is that when they see uh, this uh, Boston Dynamics uh, Atlas robot, um, many of my colleagues or some other non-robot uh, the uh, people uh, are very much afraid that this kind of robot is appearing around us. And if it does have some kind of intelligence by himself, uh, I have to lower the volume again. And then uh, if combined with some kind of autonomous AI, then it, may, uh, it may hurt uh, the human. Or uh, someone believe that this is from the personal dynamics and um, they may be afraid of that this, this kind of robot is around in his bedroom or living room to, to handle uh, your, your uh, the home, uh, home the things. Um, um, so this kind of thing make the people that uh, the robot is very coming closer, and sometimes they may feel that feel kind of afraid that it may hurt or interfere your life. And I show you another interesting picture that I taken uh, recently from the newspaper. This is uh, illustrated by a comic uh, the illustrator in 1965. He projected uh, for scene in the year 2000. Now we, we are 2017. So anyhow, they foreseen 35 years from the 1965, uh, this drawing. If you see the drawing carefully, um, he, he claimed that the solar cell house, an electric newspaper, uh, there, um, here, this, he is seeing uh, the newspaper. Uh, by the time there is no tablet uh, pieces, so he, he imagined the TV, maybe. Um, and handheld TV phone, um, and she is he, here, here. Uh, his telephone, video phone. So he is expecting that one, and also electric car. This is his electric car, electric vehicle, and his move, moving walk, moving walk. And uh, she is sick, but is treated by remote uh, monitor. So this kind of remote medical treatment or, or monitoring. 
And also, this is homeschooling with uh, the some kind of panel. And this one is um, a daily, it's, it's a daily uh, uh, cuisine recipe for delivered by wire or by the time. And uh, yeah, there's robot is cleaning the street. Um, and there, and there is, uh, most of them are appearing these days. It's quite uh, accurate to predict uh, these days, except uh, that we are going for field trip to moon. It's not quite realizable at this time. Um, and this is an example that um, recently, uh, six months ago, in the Korea hosted uh, Winter Olympic in Pyeongchang. Uh, by the time uh, in, in, we deployed many different kinds of robots, uh, uh, and, and including a torch delivery ceremony, and this uh, one, this robot is mine. Uh, an FX2 robot used uh, to, uh, to carry the torch with carrying the boy who is holding the data arm. The data device can control the robot arm. And also there are some other examples that there's a ski robot competition by the time. So they are 100% autonomous. Um, they have to find the flags gate and they have to pass all five gates until the final goal. And we measure the time. And there are many, many interesting accidents and fun things. And eight uh, the, the teams participated this, in this competition. Uh, only two robots can, uh, can be successful to get the target. I, I found that uh, they are very novice. Uh, they are much better than human novice because they don't have any afraid, uh, feel fear. Uh, there's Korean one, not, not US dollars. <laughs> that equivalent to about ten thousand dollars. He he was the winner. Okay, and I will show you one more thing. In okay, I make it louder. Olympic athletes aren't the only star attraction at the 2018 Winter Olympics. A slew of robots have been designed to help with various tasks at the event, and some are even competing for their own medals. These non-human participants have been creating quite a buzz. <clears throat> we have eight different kinds of robot, um, including human robot who will greet the VIP and new guests. A bipedal humanoid robot originally designed to assist with disaster relief efforts, Hubo's main job is to greet guests. <laughs> Please hold my hand and shake it gently. The robot cleaners are over a meter tall and a meter in diameter. They can sweep almost 900 square meters of floor per hour before finding their way back to their charging stations. Their built-in camera and LiDAR sensors help them navigate and move around the venue, and they sometimes speak. <laughs> Feeling parched after a long curling match, the beverage delivery bot is here to help. It holds a refrigerated carriage filled with cold drinks and travels around the space serving thirsty patrons. For anyone who is lost, Suhurang is part mascot and part guide. It's a conversational robot with an interactive touchscreen display that can answer questions about the weather, Olympic schedules and venues, and take selfies. I love you. <laughs> I love you too. But a little farther from the main Olympic venues, it was a few robot skiers that stole the show and captured people's hearts. Organized by the Ministry of Trade, Industry, and Energy and the Korea Institute for Robot Industry Advancements, the robot skiing competition was a chance for robot makers to showcase their <laughs> prototypes. Like the Olympics, there were some accidents and robot casualties, but one <laughs> tiny robot came out on top. Taekwon 5, the shortest skier in the world at 75 centimeters tall, claimed the top prize for making it to the finish line. <laughs> Approximately 85 robots are working at the Olympics. Their creators say that this is the perfect testing ground for their abilities and a great way to demonstrate how robots can eventually become part of day-to-day -day life. So this is quite an ideal test bed for the robots to test uh, how it's working and how it could be uh, improved after all.
Okay, it's almost end of. Uh, this was aired by CNBC uh, during the Olympic period in the United States. Um, um, as you see that um, these days there are many different kinds of so-called intelligent service robot, um, including home service robot. Actually, home service robot is quite not defined yet. What is home service robot? Sometimes cleaner robot could be some surveillance robot. So it is not very clear what is home service robot, but people are expecting to have a robot, some kind of robot, to help you uh, for all the household uh, work jobs. Um, definitely, uh, there are many medical robots in hospital in different types of, for surgery or, or holding uh, the lights or some, some kind of treatment, medical robots. And also there are many uh, military related robots. Um, as you see that um, most of the funds for the robot are from the mostly from the military and healthcare area. And also uh, there are robots in hazardous environment and, and robot for entertainment. Um, that is very popular these days for toy or for research uh, purposes or some education purposes. We categorize all of those education, research, um, and, and entertainment. They, we categorize in entertainment area. And last one is re rehabilitation robot. Uh, that is, the role of that robot is becomes severe and severe for the elderly society. Um, and also, um, there are different kinds of robots is available in this time. The first one is so-called AI group. AI group is uh, just like a smart speaker. Uh, there is no uh, mobility, but it does have certain level of uh, autonomy by himself. Um, that is a, a kind of uh, is, uh, sometimes considered as a robot. And next group is that they put some kind of uh, very little mobility there. Um, like as uh, most famous one is uh, Pepper robot from SoftBank, and there are some others. Um, usually, that kind of robot does have a link with a cloud environment, and the mobility is very limited, and no power to handling the actual materials, and it will not destroy anything around. Always, he's escaping from uh, the, the, the obstacles. And third group is that robot with a certain level of physical power. Um, that kind of robot is not available in the market except the research purposes uh, because uh, that technology is not matured to be used in real practice yet. So it is a testing stage, and most of them are tested in the university and research. You, many of you are using that kind of robot these days. And, and another inter the thing the observe these days is that um, there are new uh, participants coming in the robot area, and that is, uh, for example, Amazon, SoftBank, Google, and that kind of, of uh, company industry is not never done, never do anything on the robotics. Uh, the traditional industrial robot players does not coming yet, coming out for the intelligent robot area. They are all newcomers. Uh, for example, say Amazon, as you know, that they are started from the uh, kind of uh, the logistics robots, and SoftBank, they are started with so-called social robot, and and the Google, um, they are autonomous driving. Well, at first, uh, they are also interested in in logistics robot, and uh, as you know, that he, they acquired eight different kinds of robots two years ago. Um, um, most of them, are, I think, resold, resell, resold again. And anyhow, um, Google is uh, very interested in robotics uh, area. And also Toyota and Honda, uh, they are interested in robot for the elderly person, uh, people. Um, so th that is kind of a new trend. Uh, the traditional industrial robot players is all just watching and new players coming for the intelligent robot uh, area. Um, the, the size of market, robot market, um, is not big. Uh, the, about 15 years ago, uh, when I heard from the U.S. Uh, robot industry, people say that the total size of industrial robot in the United States, in the United States, is about one billion. That one billion is the market size of aroma candle market. So aroma candle market is one billion. Whole industrial robot market is one billion. It's quite small and become larger and larger, uh, but still it's not very big compared with other industries. 
Um, uh, it is about, uh, about uh, 10, uh, 13 billion, and, and total, including the other robots, it, the size is about 20 billion market. Um, and some statistics say that it, it will be growing, it will be growing uh, about 10 to 15 percent a year. Um, and these days, uh, the increase uh, was uh, the, uh, initiated by a China market. China, a new growing market. China does have 50 percent of new uh, growing market. Um, but the thing is that um, robot market is uh, the size is very flexible. Uh, someone says uh, two times bigger than this, sometimes like 10 times bigger than this, because uh, it is a matter of definition of robot. What is robot? Um, if robot with manipulator, a, a typical industry robot, yeah, we definitely say that that's robot. But there are many automation equipment, robotized automation equipment. If you include that kind of things, then robot market become bigger, very big. So some cities say that is about 300 billion or 1.8. No, one. Uh, yeah, that is. Uh, um, yeah, three. Uh, no, 31. You have to remove a zero. Uh, 31 billion. Um, the other one is 188 billion. There's 350 billion. That market size is 10 times bigger than the other expectation. The, the reason that that makes a big difference is that um, the matter of definition of the robot. Um, anyhow, many people uh, believe that the robot market will be growing in the near future. Come future. Um, but the, uh, today I'd like to uh, the review uh, what is the real background. The expectation is very, very high, but in surround you, the, I showed you several examples of robot, but in reality, it is very hard to see the robot in your daily life. Uh, the, in, uh, somewhere there are, but it is not very popular and not many uh, around you. Um, so, the, so I'd like to review the, what happened in recent 15 years. Um, the industrial robot appeared in mid-1960. And, and, and these days, after 21st century, year 2000, um, we started thinking of so-called intelligent robot. So uh, the year 2000 is kind of, uh, kind of uh, the turning point that uh, by the time uh, Honda released uh, so-called ASIMO robot, human robot, small human robot, and Sony company uh, they released uh, so-called AIBO, AIBO robot, that's kind of robotic pet, and, and, and a Curio, the, the very small uh, human robot. So they initiated a big uh, robot market by the time, and this kind of robot will be uh, dominated in uh, 10 to 15 or 20 years from the year 2000. And uh, there are uh, very many investor startups in robots in early year 2000. Uh, but uh, the expectation was quite not right, so it become a bubble, and uh, there are many people dis uh, disappointed that robot market is not growing that much faster. Fast. Um, the reason is that um, I think that the, the expectation was very, very high, but actual technology that we have is not that high yet, not ready to uh, provide that kind of uh, high level of necessity. And the, the reason is that a typical industrial robot is working at very structured environment. Um, there is a fit for the robot, and man is not allowed to get into that robot space because it is 100% space for robot. And intelligent robot this day is that a robot should work in unstructured environment. It is not fit for the robot. It is fit for the man, human, but for the robot, they once get into robot, get into the human human daily life environment, they will get into uh, the lots of lots of trouble, like stairs and very narrow corridors and chairs, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. That makes uh, everything very difficult. And and industrial robot is everything is uh, pre-programmed. And scheduled uh, as uh, repeating and simple, but uh, the intelligent robot does not have any task until the environment is given. For example, say you have cleaner robot. Once you hold your cleaner robot, it does not have any idea what to do. Once you down the floor, then he has to find what to do. So he has to find the wall and clean something. And humanoid robot same. 
a uh, human robot, if you hold a human robot like this way, it doesn't do anything. Once he touched the ground, they start to balance by himself and find the next step. So, um, intelligent robot doesn't have any idea what to do until the environment is given. There's a big difference. And the industrial robot is um, um, robot to robot or machine to robot interaction. But uh, in, uh, these days, uh, the robot is robot to environment, robot to human interaction. That is huge difference. So, if I say uh, left and right like this way, it looks simple, but that technological difference is so big. But the thing is that when you want to make this kind of thing for the robot, you have to find the knowledge to build these kind of things. But there is no, no uh, the, the, like his, uh, um, um, the, how can I say, um, extraterritorial technology not existing. And we have to learn from the basics from industrial robot. So uh, at first, uh, if they're thinking, say, a vision, they started from motion vision and make it finer and finer and it become a more natural visions. So most of the work is based upon the industrial robot technology. So these days uh, we are talking about many intelligent or control, structure, design robot, but they are actually based upon the industrial robot experiences. So uh, basically all the approach is actually uh, in the boundary of technology in industrial robot. Uh, so that makes uh, everything very difficult that um, it is very hard to be realized in real situation. Um, and for example, say this. Um, this is the typical industrial robot uh, in, in automobile uh, company. Um, what he's doing is that kind of sheet metal working um, and welding and painting uh, for this kind of uh, purposes, um, but uh, if you see another job, then most of work is done by man, actually. So in the average, they say, um, in, in manufacturing uh, factory, um, the rate of ratio of robot is about four uh, percent or three point five percent. Means that a um, hundred labor work there, there are three or four robots. So for example, say automobile company, that's the average of automobile company. Means that if there are 1,000 robots, there are more than the, 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 the 20,000 people are working. Um, so most of work is done by men, actually. Why? So many robot engineers, including you, try to find, uh, develop new robot, replace human labor, but still is in, in lab level, experimental level. It is very hard to implement in real world. So um, this kind of robotization and or, or the automation, a major thing was developed in mid 80s, 1980s to 90s. But after that, um, the, the growing rate become very, very low. Still, that kind of shape is very similar to 30 years. In coming recent 30 years, in robot position in factory is not very expanding because the task related for the man is that something like this, very interactive, must be soft, and, 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 and as you know, that, that kind of task is very easier for man and it is very, very difficult for the robot. Everyone understands why it is very difficult for the robot to hold uh, two arms together with a solid work like this way because uh, to perform that, that, that kind of things, robot must be very compliant uh, and it does a force feedback, etc., etc. Et that kind of thing is, uh, can be realized in, in, in experiment in lab, but in reality, um, that is very hard to work guaranteed in 100% all the way. In the factory, you should work 100%, not 99%. So we can show the demonstration, but if it is moved to your factory, if they drop once, then they will remove the robot. That is a reality, because in the experimental setup in the lab, we can regulate uh, the condition or environment very carefully, not to go over that range, but if uh, that kind of robot is placed in real factory, then the environment is changing, and it's not guaranteed that uh, the original condition is uh, keeping all the way. Um, so that was the real uh, difficulties. Um, but anyhow, uh, this kind of necessity is so big, and so that's the reason that we are doing research on these kind of purposes. 
Um, yeah, the same thing. This kind of thing can be done very easily for small children, but for the robot, that is very, very hard task, uh, these kind of things, because very interactive things. As you see that, he's looking good. Uh, that is good for robot, I guess. Man cannot do that. That kind of thing is good for the robot. Um, and another example, <clears throat> we have uh, the DARPA Robotics Challenge, and, and the, the, uh, I participated in uh, the DARPA Robotics Challenge, and I saw Eric, who uh, managed to hold this process uh, from, at the DARPA. Anyhow, um, the, uh, there were 25 robots at the same time. Um, including 10 Atlas, in the most right, uh, this Atlas robot. Um, by, the time, by that time, it is two and a half years ago, by the time the Atlas robots can run and can balance in a single leg or uh, it can, yeah, mostly do uh, that you see today. So it is very powerful robot. And I saw Chimp robot uh, and Rec yesterday, and Chimp robot there. Um, uh, this is very famous Japanese, uh, the uh, industrial humanoid robot named HRP series, HR4. Uh, the four of these participated, and this robot is from NASA. Um, the robot is used for constructing a structure in, at the moon or, or, or Mars in the future maybe, or it can be used for, at, at the space shuttle. Um, and um, yeah, this one is another robot from, from Japan. And this is uh, the European representative from the IIT uh, named Walkman, uh, including those robots. There are 25 robots working together. Um, but, uh, and the condition was that um, by the time only eight tasks was given, um, driving a car, and, and, and he has to get out from the car, and he has to open the door by himself and, and, and go over the rough terrain or close or turn off on their own the valve um, and go over the rough terrain and or there are that kind of eight tasks and plus uh, they claim that they will cut off the Wi-Fi means that uh, the, it should have certain level of autonomy by himself. Uh, the, what, how could they do to regulate uh, the, the autonomy is that, oops, yeah, autonomy is that, um, they provide very low bandwidth uh, Wi-Fi signal, very low bandwidth. The size is about 9.6 kilobit, not byte, bit per second. Uh, that is very, very low. So uh, with this speed, uh, to take a decent picture, it will take at least one minute. One decent image, it will get uh, it'll, in this one minute. It is guaranteed, but very, very low. So it can be, the signal can be used for V-coning, B-coning or something. And another, another condition that provides us is that um, they connect the Wi-Fi momentarily, at one time per minute in the average, but very random, and the data may be lost during the period, but anyhow, they burst uh, the very high bandwidth Wi-Fi signal just once every, uh, once a minute in the average, not very randomly. So we have to utilize the signal but, but because they make the whole Wi-Fi signal more real, realize, realistic at the disaster the situations. That was the condition. And, and, and operator is not uh, supposed to control, uh, giving any control without, uh, without these kind of things. And the, all the process takes about three years. It started from uh, mid-2012 and uh, finished in uh, 12, uh, 2015. It took about two and a half years. Um, as I know that the total budget from the DARPA is very close to 100 million US dollars. And last one year, um, some national government, uh, and international government is involved, including Japanese and Korean and European uh, the government is involved. Uh, still, for example, the Korean government is sponsored about 5 million US dollars by the time. Anyhow, so total budget becoming huge and huge, and we worked together for three years to make it work. Um, at last, and this was the final, um, that our is 18 times faster than the real speed. You will see what happened. Robot is not jerking, video is jerking. And the Hubo, the, uh, 
uh, has kind of transforming the, 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 the mobility. And now he's using LIDAR, and they are all autonomous, and he trained to pick the tool alone on the shelf, so he has to get rid of other <laughs> dirty things, <laughs> and, and, and he got one position. He made round circle. So that kind of thing is done by himself. Um, operator room is about 300 apart from the scene, and the internet con disconnected, and no, 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 all the uh, everything is disconnected except uh, the provided Wi-Fi signal. And the task was so-called surprise task. It is not trained. Some other seven scenario, it is kind of uh, script-based, means that it does have a general scenario. Yeah, there's door. A door should be opened by himself. Uh, but door size and location is not uh, pre prescribed. So every time he has to find where to door knobs and how to open the door, it must be done by himself. But, but generally, uh, door opening or riding a drive uh, and, and, and removing uh, some the debris, they are predefined. So we practiced. But that plug out and plug in the cable is not practiced yet. It's solely done by remote way. It's done by, by himself and some remote uh, the, the, the control. And once he get out from the, the inside, um, first his uh, light that was, uh, uh, was blinded due to the very strong sunlight. So it takes two, uh, two or three minutes to, to get regular, regularize his eyesight again. And at last, he climbed up the four stairs, and his uh, eye. A slow video for last night. That was the last step. So, um, um, they, it took about 44 minutes, 44 minutes to complete uh, the eight missions without uh, any external help. Um, but for me, it is not quite satisfactory. Um, in, in our practice, it was used to be uh, in 30 minutes when the whole the process is done. But when I do the same thing by myself, it took only one and a half minutes. But robot takes 40 minutes, or 40 times slower than, at least 30 times slower than man. So how could you use that kind of slow robot in real practices? It's kind of not, not, not reasonable. Um, so, um, but the thing is that if, yeah, this is true that it is not quite uh, the real, realistic to use that kind of robot in, in real instead of man, but the thing is that if this room is contaminated 100% of radiations or 100% of chemical things, then there's no way except that kind of robot, uh, the, the, because man cannot uh, into that kind of sin. Um, so, and some, there are other examples. Some of you may work with this robot, one of these robots, I guess. I don't know why my video is so shaky. This is robot shaking. The question is that you saw many beautiful demonstrations of walking, running, 
and doing some job, and you made many beautiful video demonstration for your robot. But what happened with this robot? Because they spent lots and lots of effort and money and period to make it work perfectly, and they pressed a lot. But in reality, that kind of thing has happened. Uh, there are Atlas robots there. Uh, there is very strong, as you see, they can handle everything, and many good robots. Uh, they experienced very similar things. But, so, um, and it takes 40 minutes, and only three teams uh, get the final, anyhow. Um, the reason they failed, why, was that not the matter of your algorithms. It is not the matter of mathematics. Actually, it's a matter of how do you fail you? How, how do you fail you? Somewhere, somehow. This motor is not working because put, um, at least there are, put at, there are more than 30 to 35 actuators at the same time. And uh, there are vision cameras, not one, LiDAR, two or three LiDARs, and four or three or four cameras, and, and the first talk sensor, gyros, everything. And there are 30 more motors, and then packed into the very uh, small spaces, like as human. And uh, they, they are not round the box. It is all very complicated structure. There are many movements, like his bending, or sometimes twisting, sometimes rotating. It, all the cable must be survived on that kind of harsh environment. And it must be operated by, by battery. So you have to uh, think of um, battery consumptions. And the internal communication is very, very severe because we need very high resolution of uh, the camera. So usually we set up the vision system, sometimes working, but sometimes it fails without any reason. It stopped or it crashed the systems. But that kind of thing is happening in real. Um, but in the, during our experiment, mostly we ignore that kind of thing. It's happened all the way. So ignore and reboot again. But in reality, there is no way to reboot. It, it should not be happen in real. That is real problems. And for example, say, insecure mobility. Um, biped walking um, looks beautiful, but it's not very secure yet. So uh, if it's walking by himself, that's fine. But if the, the interact with the environment during walking or by standing, um, it is very hard uh, to keep the stability because they have to regulate all the, all the torques. And we are doing research, many, many research on that kind of subjects. It's working at the, at the lab, but it is not guaranteed it's working everywhere and every time. Uh, there's the real difficulties. Um, and, and another issue that we found was that um, the, the, as a scientist engineer, we'd like to make all the robot 100% autonom autonomically, autonomy. So it is done by himself all the way. Uh, we want to rely, rely everything on his own intelligence or autonomy. But that autonomy is working well, that's fine. But it goes wrong, then there's no way to get back. So uh, sometimes we have to intervene by manually. So um, if some team is too much rely on the AI, some AI goes wrong, then there's no way to get back. But some the other team is too much rely on manual control. But if the Wi-Fi wi connection is so poor, then manual manipulation is not very effective. So we have to make balance between how much is done by autonomy auto, by himself, how much we have to intervene all the time. That kind of thing is not very simple issues. And, and there are so many operator mistakes, and, 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 and the, the, yeah, that kind of thing is other big issues, anyhow. Uh, this is reality. <clears throat> so um, I would like to a little bit get back uh, to see uh, the in between the industrial robot and AI robot. Um, I would like to define uh, the industrial robot and AI robot I like this way, um, to explain more things. Um, industrial robot, I would call that deterministic robot. Deterministic robot is, yeah, the, as well, literally deterministic. Everything is deterministic. So there is no uh, random, no autonomy. It, it is moved as instructed, as programmed. A very deterministic robot. So if I say industrial robot is de deterministic robot, and the other hand, AI robot, is I should call self-surviving robot. Self-surviving robot. It can survive without any person's A's, it should survive by himself. That is truly AI robot. His robot there, he has to survive by himself in human environment. That is the ultimate form of uh, AI robot. So I'd like to ask you that, yeah, we do have industrial robot, deterministic uh, robot. Do we have a self-surviving robot now, yet, in your, nearby? I think 
No, except one. There is at least one type of robot is self-surviving in our home. There's cleaner robot. Clear robot is self-surviving robot. The clear robot is staying, charging by himself, sometimes clean around and charging and clean, charge, clean, charge, and no one is touching sometimes. Just we can uh, the, uh, clear up the, 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 the dust case just once a month, that's it. It's self-surviving. Except that old robot should have some kind of care. So, um, so I, I put another robot in center. We call that kind of robot is professional robot. Professional robot. Professional robot is operate based service robot. So I put the, in between, uh, in between the industry robot, the AI robot, put the um, professional robot is uh, operator based service robot. I would like to go more, a little bit more about the professional robot. What is operator based service robot? Means that this robot should be controlled by trained operator. Trained operator, okay? And the other side, when robot encountered some interaction with environment, he has to take care of that kind of thing, things. He has to take care of all the, in, the, the interference or interaction with uh, the environment. But the important thing is that it is not supposed to, it is not allowed to interact with untrained public. It must be separated from un, un, untrained public. That's a rule. Um, for example, the drone, you can say drone. Drone cannot fly by himself. A drone must be controlled by man or controlled by supervised uh, controller somewhere. It is not uh, always controlled by somewhere. Um, but it must be safe against for the environment. He has to uh, not crash the trees or buildings. He has to interact with environment anyhow. And, but he's not supposed to interact with untrained public. For example, say, if we order uh, the, the something from the Amazon and the drone is delivering the things, uh, goods, what you uh, uh, they ask, then what happened was that drone is coming and drone is drop the box and then drone is uh, flying away, then you can get the box. You are not supposed to the, uh, touch the flying drones by your hand and take my uh, goods like that way. It's not allowed. For example, say food delivery robot. Food delivery is coming and open and drop, then you pick. So you are not supposed to take something when the robot arm is moving. If I uh, say, uh, this is as a bottle, for example, say if I hand in this bottle for you, for example, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'll give it like this way. Uh, is it, do you think, is it possible? <laughs> give back, give back, please, okay. Do you think that is it possible with robot manipulator these days? It's almost impossible, it's impossible. Because the, the moment of touching, delivering, relaying the good is very, very sensitive and subtle. Uh, so if we want, the, if you drop too fast, it will drop. If you hold together and you will fight like this way. And so, it must be very careful. If you are trained to take this one from the robot manipulator, it's fine. So, that's a reason that in the, in the experimental setup in your lab, that's possible because you are trained to take this one from out from the robot arm. But if you invite any other guests and, okay, try to take this uh, bottle from the robot, 100% fail because they are not trained. They don't, they don't know how, what to do. Um, that kind of thing. So, uh, same thing for the, the autonomous driving. The autonomous driving car must be driven by licensed uh, driver, but, uh, and it must be interact with the uh, environment there, but this is not, uh, the position is not negotiated with the, uh, the person around. So it must be avoid the person, or this is not interact with the uh, uh, things. So, if we place uh, the robot that I mentioned before, there are service robots, Atlas robot there, collaboration robot, Da Vinci robot, logistics robot, drones, pepper, everything, they are almost, most, if you see carefully them, is that they are all, all operator-based service robot. There is no 100% autonomous robot yet, except cleaner robot and some smart speakers. Smart speaker is self-surviving, but this is not a robot in some sense. It's kind of standing, um, no mobility. So, um, the, uh, the, 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 that means that um, we are doing research to, to aiming that the 100% autonomous and AI by himself, but in reality, we have uh, that kind of things in reality. 
um, in, 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 there are the two things uh, to make, I repeatedly say, the mobility and autonomy. Um, that is basic factor or ingredient of uh, the, to compose the uh, intelligent robot. So if robot does have mobility, that is kind of AI computer or, or AI. But only mobility then is industrial robot. If you combine together, then we can call it industry, uh, intelligent robot. Uh, so um, uh, those two, thing, two things are very, very important uh, to, uh, uh, for the industrial robot. Um, and, and that is kind of a way of direction. Uh, so um, I mentioned the intelligence, autonomous, and mobility, and plus some network. Um, it's uh, the, the IOTs on connections. I made this slide about 15, uh, 12 years ago. I do not change this on the words because this network is already changing. Networks, wireless, ubiquitous. These days, uh, cloud. Sometimes uh, IOTs. Many many words are changing, but basically it's connected. And some, by the time intelligence, now we are using AIs or autonomous and mobility. Um, yeah, we are using same words. Um, those three are very basic ingredients of robot. For example, the cleaning a robot is um, cleaning the room, moving around by himself. By himself means autonomy, moving around means mobility, and cleaning means function. And uh, anyhow, uh, so uh, to be a robot, uh, there's two ways. Um, we can build a robot with this kind of function, or we can embed uh, the kind of autonomy and mobility for the existing devices. For example, say, autonomous driving is a robot car or, or just driving the automobile. So it depends on the matter of definition. I call it is uh, robotic function is embedded into the, into the, in the vehicle, it means that here, uh, autonomous means uh, for uh, the driving car is he's fine. The what is road, what is sky, what is nearby car, what is where to go. That is that kind of function is all the autonomy, and mobility there is that we allow them to uh, the handling the steering wheel and allow to push it accelerator, accelerator and allow to push the the brake. Actual actual the maneuvering is allowed to for the the autonomous. So that means mobility and autonomy is embedded into the the, the vehicle. Then we call it robotized. So these days that kind of robotized is very accelerating. Everywhere that kind of function is impl implemented. Everywhere smartphone become robotized and and maybe somehow your refrigerator maybe robot. So that kind of function is robotizing. But the thing is that um, there's some dilemma, autonomy dilemma and, and mobility dilemma. Autonomy dilemma is something like that. If you, for example, say, if you allow someone to be very autonomous, okay? So uh, please do it by yourself, okay? If I say like that way, means that um, I am having two things. If he's doing exactly what I want, I'm happy, okay, it's a good thing. The other way, if he's doing his own way, it's not my intention, then I will not be very happy. I will not be happy. I'm not uh, very happy. So if I allow him to do by himself means that I have risk and merit at the same time. I have a merit that I, I, do not, I don't need to instruct him everything because he will do everything by himself. But there's some risk that he may do wrong thing. But there is no correct, uh, the wrong things. If I allow autonomy to the robot, I have all the same things. So if the autonomy for me is that, it purely means that the robot should read my mind, and then he should do as I want it. That's the definition of autonomy, not doing by himself. Uh, so um, if autonomy level is too high, you allow too many, too many autonomy, then you might be uh, very might not be very comfortable because the robot may do goes wrong because I allow him everything. But if he's doing very well, that's fine. But I'm always watching that he's doing right or not. So if you too much afraid of that kind of situation, if you lower the autonomy, then you have to intervene every time. You have to do instruction all the way. So we have to compromise how much level of autonomy is allowed to the robot. Um, for example, say I have a smartphone. Um, there are, uh, I have a Samsung smartphone, there's a Vixby, the AI, the tools. Uh, if I try to speak something, 
is good when you understand my words, but if misunderstood and screwed up, then there's no way to get back. This is always screwed up. If I ask, uh, the, uh, find a way to my home, for example, say, uh, the, uh, he may uh, understand my home is kind of home mart, it's a market. If I cancel that instruction, it's very hard, for example, say. So, um, the, the autonomy, the level of autonomy decide is very complicated and very important issues. And same thing for the mobility. What is a good thing for the mobility? It's strong and fast. Strong and fast is good. It's good for mobility. But that much, we have to take care of danger. If it's too fast and too strong, they might hurt uh, the, anybody or it might uh, destroy uh, the environment. Um, so, um, we have to regulate uh, the power. For example, say, we see many collaborative robots, um, they lower the level of power. If, if in the, the industrial robot is very strong and, strong and fast, but it's very dangerous. So if you want to use robot in your home, then you lower all the power. You have to the, sacrifice the strength and speed. If you increase the strength and speed, it become a monster or a weapon in your home. Um, plus, if um, robots should have mobility and autonomy at the same time. That's the definition of robot. But the thing is that if the very high mobility plus very high level of intelligence, it becomes master. It, that is a killer robot, actually. So if you allow too many AIs for him, so he's, he has very many uh, the power to d decide everything, and actually, he executes the power with mobility, it becomes very, very dangerous. So usually, um, robot engineers try to make this kind of uh, a curve that um, if the robot is very strong and the action consequence is very severe results, then they try to lower the autonomy level. So it must be intervened by operator. If there is no physical power, or there is no influence uh, to uh, the environment with his decision, then you can allow the AI level very high. For example, say monitoring. In monitoring, uh, because there is no physical power, for the monitoring, we can allow very high level of power. Say there is a monitor, uh, the AI algorithm that which can find bad guy, for example, say, bad behavior. So they marked bad behavior as red circles. That's fine. Uh, red circles, oh, he's bad, he's bad, he's bad. Um, it's correct, that's fine. It's wrong, then I can just say, excuse him, excuse me for him, that's fine. So the, uh, the success rate is 80%, that's fine, because I'm not going to execute based upon that uh, red dots, because I will decide by human. But if you want to connect with that kind of algorithm plus machine gun, there's another story. If I read that and shot that man, the other read that shot that man, uh, that is, they're not supposed to do that. There's a killer robot. So, um, so we have to, the good thing is that we have high level of intelligence plus high level of muscle power, that's good, but it becomes master. Um, actually, man is in this position. Man is actually, we are very smart and we are very autonomous by himself and we do have strong power. So that's the reason that there are serial killers or the Hitler type things. But anyhow, then how, could we make robot smarter and stronger with this kind of situation? Um, so it is an uh, open question, actually. And so the, the I put home service robot here, home service here, means that a very low mobility and low level of intelligence. I put home service robot here because to avoid danger. Um, for example, say I told you that um, what time is that? Oh, it's about time. Okay, this last slide. Um, I they mentioned that um, cleaning a robot at your home is the only robot if he can survive by himself. What is the surviving strategy, tactic for him? Is that low power and low intelligence, actually. Low power means that if he's, that clean robot is too fast and strong and he's go around and kick your baby and they fall down your vase and break the wall, then it will be kicked off. It's very gentle. So he touched and even if it crashed your leg, it just, oh, what's that? That's it. It will hurt you. It is not that smart. If you want to, if you see how the vacuum cleaner, robot cleaner is working, then you are very, ah, on it. It goes straight, but it turns around and it's a very strange way. 
Uh, this is very stupid, but this is right. But if it is very smart, one day he say he, he refused to work. I need to be clean. I don't need to work. And then you will be. You 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 believe that this <laughs> this machine goes wrong. It must be go to the service center. So um, then they are using very simple algorithm, uh, very simple sensor. If you put too many sensors to detect all the dirt and find the dirt one by one, if the sensor goes wrong, then it will fall down. So it uses very stupid algorithms, just right and, left, right and left, right and left, and very simple algorithms and very low power. That's the reality. Um, I would like to conclude my talk with uh, these last slides uh, that I would like to uh, summarize my talk today is that um, um, yeah, uh, there will be many, many robots around you in the near future, and we are already, already surrounded, but we are not recognized which one robot which one is not, because uh, some is real robot, but something is the robotic function embedded inside. So we consider this is not robot, but actually it's kind of robot. Uh, this is one thing. The second thing is that um, uh, the, we are doing research on many, many fancy things. Um, it is very, very difficult to realize in real uh, the uh, environment because um, condition is very complicated uh, the, uh, when you made experiment in your uh, lab conditions. The second thing. And if you try to combine mobility and AI together, it becomes much more difficult to make it work. So, um, so the, the, the become the story becomes very strange way that I'm discouraging you for the research, but my intention is not that. But anyhow, um, that is the reality um, in, in practice. Okay, thank you very much for your listening. Thank you for the great talk. Uh, questions? Ah. Okay, we, uh, <laughs> before you leave, there are a few announcements too, so if you can wait a few minutes. Um, I, I actually have one question. How about we take one question from me and then anybody who wants yeah. to? Okay. Yeah. So you, I really like the distinction between the industrial, uh, uh -huh. professional, and, uh, yeah, yeah. and uh, where do you think the impact is going to be made in terms of industry, in terms of, of um, fielded systems? Is it in yeah. which one of those? Yeah, yeah. Um, so um, my feeling is something like that. Uh, the robot is good, very good position in industry. And we want robot in our daily life. And the, it cannot fly from this point to that point at once. It's just coming out just one step by one step, OK? This is the death stage. So one foot is in industry side. The other foot is general public side. That is professional robot. So real robot is coming to the field robots, like as industry based, it must be productive, not a toy-like one. So I think the near future, um, industry-based, more productive, uh, that kind of field robot is more possibly yeah, appearing, yeah, other than uh, the farther side AI robots, in reality. The last minute question? Oh, OK. One, we'll take one question, and then we'll, we'll um, do a few announcements. Uh, blue, blue microphone. Thank, thank you for the talk. Um, I was just wondering about energy or power considerations, right? As you have robots that are becoming more complex and you want them to do all these amazing things, um, but you can't expect them to keep going back and charging or having this long power cord that's attached to them. So what about the energy or power considerations and how you'd manage that? Yeah, actually, that is your problem, actually. Um, um, these days, uh, the electric car, same. Um, we are having a battery. The usual battery size is one kilowatt to two kilowatt hour size. Uh, that is about 10% about of uh, uh, the electric car or 5% electric car. Usually, um, um, in the case of human robot, it could run about 2.5 hours with a single charge. A field robot is working about several hours maximum, um, two or three hours. That's the reality. If we uh, consume lower power, means that the robot does have less power, less torque. So if the robot does have strong enough to handling the material, for example, say 20 kilos and 30 kilos, um, it should have certain level of strength. In that case, usually uh, one single battery goes, uh, runs about two or three hours. That's the limit. So yeah, we are always adapting new battery type for the robots. Yeah, that's the reality. Okay, let's thank our speaker again. And thank you very much for your listening.
Okay, uh, one announcement from me, one announcement from Nate. So um, we've had some issues over this week about uh, people having to cancel their, their participation due to visa issues. So um, the tutorial on dynamical systems-based learning from demonstration is gonna, has been canceled because the key, some of the key people have been um, unable to, to, to actually enter the US. So the program, uh, the workshop committee chairs, Jeanette Bogue and Cynthia Matusek and myself personally um, support that decision of canceling as opposed to doing anything else. And we just want to make sure that everybody knows that the materials are online. So if you want to, if you were planning on attending that tutorial, all the materials are online. For those of you that left a registration bag or a bag at the registration and check-in table or have anything else that you were planning to pick up, uh, now is the time to pick it up. We'll be packing everything up. So again, if you checked in and chose to not take your bag at that moment or t-shirt, please check back at the table at this time. We'll be packing it up after 3 o'clock this afternoon. So make sure that you take action between now and 3 o'clock. Thank you. <laughs>